Welcome everybody to the Alchemical Mindset. I am Coach Renz and today we're going to briefly discuss how Enlil is both Satan, Yahweh, Jehovah, and Allah, as well as many other deities. And we're going to briefly talk about the creation of the universe as well as the creation of man and religion. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? Now, of course, as always, this is not to discourage anyone from their religious practice. If 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 what get, if that gets you closer to your creator, if it gets you closer to the creator, then keep doing what you're doing. If that keeps you from murdering people, keep doing what you're doing. Don't don't change nothing. Don't change nothing. If it keeps you from murdering people, stay where you at. But if it's causing you to murder people, I need you to open your mind and think something different. It's causing you to rape and steal and, 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 and pillage. I need you to start changing your mind. If you're not moving in life, don't feel that divine connection that you've been looking for. You might want to start changing your mind. So welcome again to the Alchemical Mindset. I want to thank all my subscribers, everyone who supports the channel through Patreon, everyone who's a member, become a member of the channel. Our members have a special convo, a special Zoom meeting that we have on the full moon. We look forward to this month's full moon. Y'all ready for it? I know I'm ready for it. So here's the deal, guys. Let's talk about this. I know this will go against many of your traditional religions. And if you're a traditional religious person, then this video is not for you. So you can say things in the comments, but it doesn't really matter because we're not having those discussions. This is for people whose mind are open, whose way awoke to the point where they realize that what they've been taught all their lives is not exactly correct. I'm not going to outline everything for you as far as where you need to go and find it because if I just tell you, then you're not learning. I need you to be able to go out and research this. Find this information for yourself. Find it so that you can know it. You can know it because that's more important for you to absolutely know it. So let's break this down for a minute. We're going to start from the oldest and then move forward. And then you'll be able to connect those dots and see why you believe what you believe and why you were taught what you were taught. And for those who've already changed all my alchemists out there, then we understand how we are always reevaluating our thinking so that we get rid of all the superfluidities, get rid of all the parasites, get rid of all the negativity, get rid of all the waste material so that we have that more perfected mindset. But we know we will never perfect anything because we're always looking to get better and better. So when we start this story in a Sumerian text, not the su. Not the Sumerians, who came later, the Sumerians. When you look at the Sumerian text, the Sumerian text talks about Tiamata and how Tiamata is this frequency, this, this energy, this, 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 this amazing feminine light of energy that was in the very beginning, that, that held all of creation within itself. And... The Sophia, this was later will become known as the Sophia to the Hebrews, which is why in the original Hebrew text, it says that in the, it says in the beginning with the Sophia, God created. It talks about the Sophia, meaning wisdom is what they translate that into later as wisdom. But it is that feminine energy, that feminine frequency of nurturing that originally created the universe, the Tiamata in the Sumerians. And when that energy first created, it made Anu, meaning sky. It made the Anu. Later, this becomes the god, Anu. And Anu creates his sons, Enlil and Enki. But he created the Anu. But when the Sophia, when the Tiamata was this divine frequency, was in the process of creation, a split happened, like splitting an atom. And from that splitting of the atom is where we got the masculine energy, right? So the masculine and the feminine energy were now here together. But the Anu decided that it wanted to war against Tiamata and war against that feminine energy and recruited his sons Enlil, his son Enlil, to fight in that battle and overcome the Tiamata, overcome the feminine energy and establish a patriarchal society, a patriarchal patriarchal energy flow. Enlil warred against his brother who fought for the Tiamata, Enki. Enki wanted to provide wisdom 
for all mankind. This is why Enki is always the provider of wisdom. Enki later on becomes Osiris, and later on is also Thoth, and later on is also Hermes Trismegistus. It is also, whenever you see this one who brings wisdom, that is Enki. That is the, the, the ideology of Enki, the representation of Enki. Anytime you see this male energy that's trying to force the feminine energy down and cause destruction, that is the Enlil energy. Now, I say that because what we need to understand is that in the Sumerian story, in the Sumerian story, when Anu sends Enlil to Earth, he sends him as the Satan of Earth. That's right. I said it. The Satan of Earth. He was the Satan in the garden. He was the Satan, which in Sumerian doesn't mean adversary as it became later to be known in the Hebrew, it means the administrator. The Satan in the Sumerian meant the administrator. So Enlil was the Satan. Now, because Enlil was the Satan and there was an agreement between Anu, Enki, and Enlil to speed up man's genetic profile by introducing Anunnaki bloodline, and, 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 and let me throw this in here. In order, in the, in the creation of man, the Tiamata, who wasn't destroyed, agreed to the creation of man, but a certain type of Anunnaki had to be sacrificed, a male sacrifice for the benefit of man. Just want to throw that in there. Sacrifice of a man for the benefit of man. And that blood was mixed in, was utilized, and it was the blood, was utilized in the creating of the, 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 the speeding up of the evolution of man, if, if you will. That Enki and others like Ninharsag were in charge of. And hence you get the let us make man in our own image. So Enki is making man. Well, Enlil. The Satan, the administrator, was of the mindset of saying that, hey, man is a slave race and should not be able to re reproduce. Enki, and that's what Enlil wanted. Enki was of the mindset of, no, man has that spark of divinity like every other being in the universe. And man should know. So Enki brought knowledge to man. The tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden, according to the Sumerian story, is not the tree of good and evil. It's the tree, it's the knowledge of being able to make tools. It's called the Nesh, the tree of Nesh in the Sumerian, which means tools. The thing about tools, a hammer can either build a house or it can murder someone. It can destroy a house. Every tool can be used that way. A screwdriver can be used to tighten things together and bring things together. Or it can be used to tear things apart. Tools provide the method for man to become as the gods become. Because as man began to utilize tools, you see men were the tools of the Anunnaki, but as men began to understand how to build tools and create tools, then their need of the Anunnaki would begin to decrease. And when your Hebrew text says that we must keep man from the tree, and think about this, man must not eat from the tree of life, otherwise he will become like us. How can man become like God by eating from the tree of life? And what is this tree of life? This tree of life that we see in, in, in the Norse mythology, in the Mayan mythology, in uh, the Egyptian mythology, in every religion that has ever been known, there is the tree of life. This tree of creation. And it is believed by most scholars that this was a methodology to either prolong your 
physical life, this meat suit, this poverty suit that we wear here on earth that our spirit came to dwell in, or it was a way of coming to the understanding of consciousness everlasting. Is it that we reincarnate and we've forgotten our previous lives? And that is the method that if we ate from the tree of life, we would know this previous life, much like the, uh, the, the, the Dalai Lama continues to reincarnate and they are able to distinguish who is this reincarnation of this current consciousness of the Dalai Lama that has repeated itself. I believe it's on the 13th as the, um, I know the Krishna consciousness is on the 13th um, time around, 13th age. Is it that we reincarnate and we begin to know as the Anunnaki has demonstrated that they were able to resuscitate, reincarnate within their own society? Is it that knowledge or is it the knowledge of our consciousness going to another level and another level level knowing all that we take with us? Because without that tree of knowledge, does our consciousness just come back to earth? and relive this thing again until we get the Buddha mind, the Christ mind, and be able to understand that sweet elixir of life and alchemy to be able to elevate. So the tree of life has been in every religion. How is that? Why is that so? How would the Sumerians have already known that so long, so, so long ago? What is the answer here? But what we see is that Enlil was the great Satan in the garden. I know I went a little uh, divergent little thing there. Enlil was the Satan in the Garden of Eden. But Enlil was also the one who walked into the garden in the cool of the day and asked Adam or Adamu, where are you? And when Adamu said that here I am, but this woman Titi in the Sumerian, her name is Titi, gave me of the fruit, gave me fruit from the tree of knowledge. And as I said, that tree of knowledge was Nesh. She gave him tools, the knowledge of how to make tools, how to make tools, not a fruit, not an apple. Apples don't grow in that region of the world. OK, you don't get apples in the Mesopotamia. So let that story go. But tool making is what she brought to him. And why did Inky go to the woman? Because Inky supported Tiamata, supported Sophia, the wisdom. So he went to the nurturing woman, not the negative impact that the that these books have put on women. And that's a whole nother video that will we'll come up soon about how women have been treated so poorly because it's that continual war against the feminine energy. Because they know that with man ever understand how to raise the Kundalini to match up this masculine and feminine energy in unity. Whoo! Their hold on us will end. Their hold will end. That's my purpose. That's my purpose. It's to bring that to bear to everyone. So, Enlil then is both the Satan, the administrator, as well as Yahweh, who is walking through the cool of the day. The El, the Elohim, who is walking through the cool of the day. How can that be? Why, why did these things get twisted? Well, as I said, there was a constant war between Enlil and Enki. So, Enki, not being able to control the narrative because he was not the Satan, was given this negative impact, this negative role. And the words began to change over time. The meaning began to change over time. And this is the beginning of the creation of religion. Because if you recall your holy book, it is a few generations later before man begins to call upon the name of the Lord. So before religion starts... Now, according to the Sumerian story, these religions begin to start because now man can reproduce. Man is a, well, that's one of the things man was able to reproduce. Man is able to build, to, utilize tool work. So man had to recognize the Anunnaki as gods because the Anunnaki ate from the tree of life to which man was not uh, uh, able to do so. And this knowledge of the tree of life does not allow man to do that. So man sees the Anunnaki as living 20, 30, 45, you know, 50,000 years, 100,000 years, they are gods because they don't die like we die. That man's body, scientists are looking and are saying that man has two genes that one is preventing us from remembering, which is why I always found it interesting. 
how did Europeans forget that black people existed? And how did black people forget that Europeans existed? There was this gap of time. There's a time frame where, you know, black people were in Rome. Romans went down into Africa. But then there's the Dark Ages. And then all of a sudden in the age of exploration, there's the myth of black people down in Africa. And like, is there a gene that causes us to forget our own story unless we tell it over and over again? And is there a gene that causes our bodies to die sooner than they should? Most scientists believe that this body is designed to live 200 plus years. That the telomeres in our cells are designed to not um, disintegrate or degenerate for over 200 years. And if you don't understand what I'm saying in that, Telomeres is what allows your cells to reproduce themselves. And as long as your cells have telomeres, they can continue to reproduce. This is why cancer cells are so hard to uh, conquer because their telomeres never decrease. They never um, de degenerate. So cancer cells will continuously reproduce themselves without becoming less and less effective. But our cells don't work that way. Our cells the telomeres decrease and we're not able to reproduce ourselves, which is dying of old age. Our bodies are designed to live 200 plus years, but yet we don't. Some re somehow, some way, something happened in the genome and we don't. So anyway, back to the story at hand here. Inky and Enlil are constantly at war. So Inky becomes the negative impact. Inky becomes the evil one. But how is it then? So we've established the Satan is in Enlil, which we know the Satan later becomes Lucifer, Be Beelzebub. You know, doc doctr uh, the doctrine keeps changing and changing. The redactors change it and change it. And, you know, uh, the Satan becomes all these things. So Enlil is the, is the devil. Enlil is also the one who walked in the cool of the day that Adam said was God. So he's Yahweh, El, Jehovah. But what other evidence suggests that they are still all the same, that Allah is a part of this? Well, when we get to the story of Abraham, still in Genesis, according to the Genesis story, since we've established that God, Yahweh, is Enlil, Abraham has a wife. And we'll talk about the whole wife thing and man blaming the woman for everything in another video. Abraham has a wife named Sarah. Sarah is, and, and Enlil promises Sarah to hate. Where at first, Enlil separates Abram from all the other people because he worshiped the old ways. Now, according to the Sumerian story, uh, Marduk and uh, Enlil are at war. Marduk is the son of Enki, and they're at war, but Enlil finds Abram, who is still you know, down for Enlil, down for the old ways of worshiping the Anunnaki. And so, he recruits Abram and says, I will make a mighty nation of you, of your children. Abram's like, cool, I'm with it. Abram has a wife, Sarah. Well, Sarah and Abraham, they decide, they, they are told by Enlil they're going to have this baby. Most of you know this story. But then time goes on. And they're like 80 years old and Sarah's been barren. Now, according to the story, Sarah gets impatient. And she tells Abraham, I'm going to give you my Egyptian slave and you will have a baby with her and that will be our child. Now, of course, Sarah gets blamed for everything on this story, but I don't think that she grabbed Abram by the penis and said, stick it in there or I'm going to kill you. I don't think anything like that was going on. So, you know, where's Abraham's culpability in this whole story? But that's a whole other thing we talk about women throughout these stories and how the feminine energy has been at war. They've been at war with the feminine energy with Tiamata from the beginning. So Sarah has the so Sarah has the Egyptian woman have a baby. This baby is Ishmael. And then when Isaac is born, Sarah then gets pissed because Isaac, I mean Ishmael, scoffs at the celebration of Isaac. And tells Abraham, kick this woman out. She ain't, and her, her and her child is not going to be a part of this inheritance. And Abraham does exactly that. Interesting, right? There again, blame the woman. What kind of weak man is this? But anyhow, Abraham kicks her out. They're out in the wilderness. Then, according to the story in the Bible, in the, in the, in the Hebrew Bible, as well as the Quran, 
Allah slash Yahweh sends angels to Ishmael. Here's Ishmael cry, which Ishmael name means God hearkens. The Lord hearkens. The Lord hears. Sends an angels down and said, don't worry about it. I got you. Uh, they move Ishmael and the spring, you know, water spring comes up and, and boom, they got water. They're good. And both in the Genesis story, hey, I'm going to make mighty nations of you, but you'll always be against, you'll always be against your brother. Hence, Jews and Muslims fighting each other all the time. And that's Allah, right? That's also El. That's El. That's Yahweh. That's Jehovah. And he tells these in the in the Hebrew version, they tell the uh the they tell the Egyptian woman and Ishmael, go back and 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 be kind to Sarah, no matter how she treats you, go and bow down to her. I don't know what's with this bow down to people deal that keeps going over and over again. And bow down. And he does. She does. So, huh. Allah. Yahweh. Same person. They're the angels dispatched by El, by God, by Allah. Same person. In the Quran, it is said that. But the difference in the Quran is that she didn't go back to Sarah. She sat there. She chilled. She built this oasis, and um, and and they and her and Ishmael ran the oasis, and they made a bunch of money with travelers going through as a great marketplace through this oasis where this well is. And many Arabs, well, many Muslims, they part of their their journey of life is to take that Hajj to this well of Ishmael. Um, as this is one of the holy places. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice place. It's nice. I've been there. Um, but can you see the line? Now, many Muslims will get on here in the comments and they will say, no, Allah and Yahweh are not the same. But your stories come the same. Both of y'all come from Abraham. Both of y'all come from the children of Ishmael and Isaac, which comes from Abraham. They're half brothers. Um, both of y'all are saying that God sent Angels, while Ishmael and his mother were in the wilderness. If you just call him Allah and you call him Yahweh, Jehovah, they're the same person. Guess what? They're all Enlil. Because Enlil is the one from the garden, is the one who had Adam, the one who uh, was the administrator over Adam and Eve or Adam and Titi. And through their line, you get Abraham, all worshiping the same God. The same Anunnaki, the same Enlil. Because when we start from the oldest story and go forward, just because your doctrines change does not change the original. So, Enlil is the Satan, the great administrator, who later becomes the devil. Enlil, utilizing that propaganda, separated himself from the devil aspect of the Satan. Enlil is also El, Enlil is also Yahweh, Enlil is also Allah. Enlil is the same. You're all worshiping the same. It's the same. I think once we realize these kinds of things, we can set aside some of our doctrine because our doctrine is really based on our race. It's based on our nationalities. It's based on tribal uh, allegiances. It's based on historical people. It's not based on the heart. It's not based on the mind of critical thinking. It's based on old stories that were told two, three thousand years ago, and not even three thousand years ago, because this story didn't even uh, really come out until the Hebrews were released from the Babylonians in 530, 535 BCE. And when they were released, they carried with them this Sumerian story. And then when the Arab nation came about through Muhammad around that 580 time frame, it's a carryover from the same stories and the thing about it is that muhammad is claimed to be so ishmael was given was said to go going to have 12 sons no 12 sons will be 12 kings uh i forget exactly which king um but it's out of cush area i believe cush might be i have to look it up but muhammad is claimed to be a direct descendant from one of those 12 sons of Ishmael, right? So you're still going back to Ishmael, no matter how you look at it. But we're, we're, we have to realize that this is a heart issue. It's a mind issue. That we have been pitted against one another. And as long as we're pitted against one another, we will never come to a point of unity where we can recognize that the earth 
provides everything that we need for everyone to live a decent life. That we have no need of war or famine. That we can provide everything for everyone on this planet. That there is no reason women should be subjugated to be beneath the heel of man because women were not... Uh, made out of a rib of a man because if a woman was made out of a rib of a man then she would be a man okay she'd be a man it's not the other way around right so we have to just accept our creation it's not something that is so ah. and I know it makes you feel special and you don't want to think that there are uh, alien overlords that came to earth and in search of gold because they were warring against their own selves and they needed a slave labor race. Maybe that's why, I mean, think about it. Slavery has been a part of our existence from the beginning of our existence. Why? At what point? I mean, was there a point where we didn't have slaves? We didn't enslave each other. But yet, we start our history with slavery. Every history starts with some level of slavery. Why is that? Is because this is what we came in when we came into consciousness, higher level of consciousness. This is what our purpose was to those who subjugated us and tricked us into believing that they were gods when they were merely beings who lived a long ass time and had more knowledge. So this is a little here and there. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. I'm sure you will. Let's have a conversation. Let's discuss it. And we will do a video about how women have been subjugated by men unfairly and how it started from way back when. But we can fix all these things. So y'all have a great day. Continue to join the channel. Thank you guys. Have a great day. You got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good vibrations. Good journey.